Welcome back to another video. I'm sorry that this video is actually late, but we are on Big Brother 26, episode 24, I believe. And this is the review, and since this is a day late, I can actually tell some spoilers about what we have to look forward to in the week ahead because the new HOH was already crowned and they already talked about what they plan on happening this week. So we'll get into all that more right now, but we're going to start off with episode 24, which Julie introduces us and says that Angsley's curse, she actually talks about the Angsley curse, which has been going around on X, like Every single person that voted no for Angsley not to come to the house has been evicted, which is hilarious. Well, everyone that was evicted voted no, should I say. I should probably say it like that. And I think that is so ironic. It's so, like, I wish it could, well, then Chemo would have had to get eliminated. And that's, or evicted. That's what she was saying. I was like, will Chemo, like, join that list? Because I guess the other two that sit on the block, which would have been Rubina and Joseph, voted for Angsley to actually come into the house. So, and then she also mentioned that seven out of seven vetoes were used, which is amazing. Another good fact, like this is this is a great season. This is literally about to be. I, I think it might be my number one favorite season. It's number Big Brother Twenty is my favorite season. I honestly don't even know what number two is. Now, I'm thinking it might be this, but I'm thinking it might have jumped in front of season twenty. I think this might be my favorite season. Season twenty also was the first season I ever watched, so it also has that advantage. Well, that was the first season I watched live. So we jump into the fallout from the veto ceremony, and Quinn and Joseph are both upset. Joseph is quietly upset at Quinn <laughs> in his DR, we find that out. But in person, they're both upset with kind of like Leah. And Quinn mentions, I can't believe she prioritized Angela over me. Like, why would she do that? And I'm just like, Quinn, why did you prioritize Chelsea, Cam, uh, Mackenzie over Joseph. You put Joseph on the block. You're risking him going home, and that's the thing about this season. A lot of people, like, it seems like it's a trend of an ally going home on their ally's HOH. Quinn ultimately says that he wants chemo out. I just think Quinn and Joseph at this point are delusional. Not because they want chemo out, but because of this whole situation. Because neither one of them were even upset with Leah. They were upset at Leah to each other's face, but when Leah came around, and then let's just jump to that. Leah's talking about how she's got both of them wrapped around her finger, and I honestly have to give it to Leah, because I think she was the one that said that she cannot believe a guy has one big brother, or was that Mackenzie? It was one of them that said that they cannot believe that a guy even won Big Brother because guys are easy to manipulate. And if it was Leah, and I hope it was Leah, she's proving it. She's literally proving it. Like, she's just, like, getting these guys to do whatever she wants. She had Cam. I feel like she lost Cam, though. She doesn't really have him wrapped around her finger no more. But she had him. And now she has Joseph. And she has uh, Quinn. And it's like, she can do whatever she wants. Like, she's, like, she's in control. Like, she can't do no wrong to them. So Joe and Angela have a conversation, and this is the reverse conversation of what we saw last episode. So this was hilarious, because Joseph is just trying to uh, politic or plead to get Angela's vote. And I just think that's hilarious. Uh, it was cool to see this, because it was literally the reverse of the conversation. He's like, I understand the hypocrisy, the the irony in this like I understand <laughs> but he had to try to get her vote and we see the scene of Mackenzie Cam and Quinn inside the HOH room and then Chelsea joins we got all four of them and uh Quinn is kind of like letting him know that he's upset he's letting him know that the plan is he wants chemo out Chelsea kind of does not want chemo out or she's kind of like trying to like second guess she's kind of like okay Joseph said a bunch and then we see a flashback of everything Joseph said and she's like that means that he knows my game he sees me as a threat he's gonna want me out in her DR she's saying this and I'm just watching this and watching her process this and I'm just like if she can pull this off that is insane now because she wanted chemo out or Kimo or Rubina to split up the duo and that was going to happen and now she's switching to wanting Joseph out and if she makes this happen give her the money so then we see Cam and Cam's kind of feeling himself he says that he's the new comp beast or no he didn't say comp beast that's Mackenzie's thing he said he's the new physical threat and he kind of wanted to keep Joseph in the house because of that but like I didn't really understand I might have got that wrong but I know that he kind of wanted to keep Joseph in the house I think. 
Now was when we saw that segment with Quentin and Leah and Joseph, and Leah says she got them wrapped around her finger, which she does, and we see the shot of her pulling her glasses down with both of them in the lenses. That was hilarious. Joseph cried to them, and it was <laughs> it was fake, and it just, to me, it seemed fake, but to them, like, maybe he had them. He hasn't won anything. He should have just played that up, to be honest, because he just looks horrible in these competitions. It, <laughs> I don't know. I just think about the fact that Tucker got out Brooklyn when she hadn't won anything. And I just view that as such a bad move, personally. I love Tucker. Love Tucker a lot. But I just view that as such a bad move. You got out somebody that doesn't win. Because you think that her social game was better. But how was her social game better if everybody... Everyone voted her out. Like, I don't... Nobody was fighting for her to stay. So, like, that's, that's something I always think about is that when it comes to like people saying social game versus uh competition game like which one is i don't know we see this scene of chelsea being jealous of cam and mckenzie and we we knew that chelsea had a crush on cam on episode one or two whichever one she was on so week one we knew that she has a crush on cam she likes him a lot personally if i'm honest i don't really see it like i it seems like Cam's not interested in Chelsea. I'm just, that's because, like, as I watch, like, see him, like, do his thing with Mackenzie and Leah, and he hasn't really, like, him and Chelsea seem kind of like how Chelsea and Cedric seem, where it's like, friends, platonic. But Chelsea has a crush on him, but she hasn't really made a move. Like, maybe she wants him to make a move or something. I don't know. But she's really jealous of Mackenzie. It's weird. I don't know. I thought it was weird when, so she touched, you know, in the Big Brother house, a lot of people cuddle. That's the thing that happens. And it happens in platonic relationships on Big Brother. Friends, they cuddle, they touch each other, like, and it's not sexual, but this one, you could tell, like, how she's playing his hair. Well, I guess not, but the arm is, I don't know. Like, I, I just found it weird when they were inside the HOH room and he, like, stood up and, like, pointed and made it a big deal to get next to her and have him do her do that like he was a dog like pet me like a dog like that one was funny and weird uh chelsea walked out the room with that one and t core followed and t core was like yeah that was weird la 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 and t core kind of took advantage of it trying to get chelsea to vote to keep chemo in and this is where i was like okay t core but t core also is in love with chelsea so I don't know if it actually was game or it just so happened to come up with that, you know? Like, that just so happened to come up. It seems like the cuddling or the touching of the hair, it happens a lot on this show. And sometimes it happens with people who don't get into showmances, if you know what I'm saying. Like, because, like, on week one, we saw Cedric and Rubina cuddling. And, like, Cedric was rubbing on Rubina. She's more than 10 years older than him. <laughs> and I'm not saying they can't be in a showman, but I don't think they were interested in each other. Now, with Cam and Mackenzie... I also don't see chemistry. Like, I don't see Cam with chemistry with her, and I don't see Cam with chemistry with Cedric. I feel like Cam, oh my gosh, with Chelsea. I feel like Cam really liked Leah, but Leah didn't like him. Like, this house is so weird. Like, everyone likes this person and that, but it's just, I don't know. Maybe Cedric, oh my god, maybe Cam and Mackenzie will get in the showman's, but for right now, I actually don't see it. But I could be wrong. So now we get to the AI arena, and immediately when I saw this, I knew exactly what it was, and I just thought this looks like Rubina's comp. And can I just say this on here? If I was them, tied up, standing there, waiting for the queue to start, I would have just turned around and looked at the rope and known my moves and had those planned out in my head. It seemed like that's what Rubina did because she was moving so fast. But immediately when I saw this, I said, this is Rubina's comp. Because she's small, she's athletic, she can move, like... <laughs> so, Chemo of those three would be, he's the biggest. Not big in, like, a bad way. I'm just saying, like, when it comes to their bodies, he's the biggest one. He seemed like he wouldn't be the one to win this comp. This seems like a comp for a smaller person. And then Joseph, I felt like, okay, he's, like, the middle of these two. Maybe he can kick it into gear, but then he just, he did not do well at all. I was watching this, and Rubina was moving. Like, she was moving, moving. And then Joseph just looked like he was still throwing comps. So Rubina checked, like, two times, I think, and was wrong both. And then she just kept moving and moving and moving and untangling this knot. And did I even say what this competition was? Oh, my gosh. So it was a box. It was a square, and it had, like, some... 
some pipes around it, like, you know, a pipe square, and they had, they were tangled up, and they had a rope around them, and they had to maneuver their body around this cube uh, to untangle this rope for it to be long enough for them to plug in a cord, I guess, I don't know, something to make them win. And Rubina got it, and I loved it. I loved seeing her win, because she was hustling. She was really trying to. And I like Tucker's reaction video he made, too. She plugged it in, and she screamed her name, Rubina! And I thought that was hilarious. I loved it. And, like, I know last episode I said I wanted Rubina to leave. But like I said, my, my opinion on this show, of the cast, changes all the time. It changes all the time. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on like how someone's playing. Because at one point, I didn't want Chelsea to win. But now, she's playing so much better than everybody because I don't even know who's in second. Probably T-Core, actually. T-Core might be in second. But is she, though? Because she's so wrapped around Chelsea. So that's where... If, if only T-Core wasn't so caught up with Chelsea, T-Core would be a much better player than she already is. But she still might be number two in this house. Uh, but Rubina got it. I was happy to see her win. She was my first favorite person. I always bring that up on episode one and two. So congratulations to her. They made the reveal and Rubina. <laughs> Rubina gave it away because she started smiling and about to cry. Actually, I don't even think she was smiling. Sorry, my camera died, but we're back. Where was I? Rubina, she did the reveal. She ran up to everyone like she hadn't seen them in months. <laughs> it was like she just saw her brother who was returning from the military or something. She was crying and running, but it was funny, but I was happy for her. Everybody was happy for her. So now it's time to, I forget what they call that word where they're supposed to like pull people into rooms and I always want to say politic but it's try to convince people to let them stay and I hated this can I just say I hated this I hated it last week when they did it with Tucker and I hated it this week so they all go into this back room like this bedroom and literally all of them went I was like what is the purpose what is the point in this and even if like why would y'all not this is time for the nominees to grab y'all why would y'all, like, go away from the nominees? Like, I, just, I don't see the point. I don't like it. And they all were just in a room. So y'all just left the living room to go into a different room, and no one talked. Like, they just looked at each other. And then Joseph finally said something that was like, guys, keep me, keep stick to the plan. He didn't really seem worried, but, like, you know, that's just how Joseph is. And then Chemo was, like, crying and, like, please, guys, whatever, if I can help your game. All that stuff. The speeches. Joseph was really basic, and he got to the point, uh, I liked the speech, because it was right to the point. And then, Chemo was way more emotional. It was way more emotional, he talked about his brother, talked about being Hawaiian, talked about being gay, all that stuff. He was crying, he really wanted to stay, uh, I feel like he thought he was going to leave, because the way he was. And I think Joseph thought that he was going to stay, because of how he was, like what they were presenting. So then it's time to vote. First person to go in and vote was McKenzie, and this vote has been going around Twitter for like, <laughs> it's like the best vote of all time. It was very suspenseful. And she took a long pause, and eventually she voted for Joseph. And then the next person was Cam, and he actually took a long pause too, and he voted for Chemo to go. So the votes ended up being three to four. Which, I love it, because, like, it's like who voted for who, what? Like, it's just, it was so, and, like, Angela, when she voted, she said, Kimo, I'm so sorry, I don't have the votes. It is like, do you? Because the last person to vote was Chelsea, and that was like, we don't know, we don't know what was going to happen. It was three to three at that point, and then she voted Joseph out. So Joseph was the one to leave. I think he was shocked. Quinn looked like he saw a ghost. <laughs> he looked like he saw a ghost. And I feel like he's making these faces so that they could be memes because he is a super fan. Like, he's, he had that face twice during this episode. But another ally going on, on their allies' HOH is crazy. Uh, leaves out with style, you know. He leaves, he goes, gets his, does his interview with Julie. He had a very respectable, respectable interview. <laughs> he had a respectable interview with Julie. She brings up him comparing his game to Dr. Will. Like, he was really confident because he was just like, yep, yep, I did that. <laughs> All this stuff. He said he was not shocked. Or no, he wasn't upset, but he was shocked that he went home. Uh, he got some of the votes right. I don't quite remember because that was last night. I'm not going to lie. Uh, he said that if he could change one thing, he would have fought harder to not go on the block. He should have talked to Quinn like, no, you cannot put me on the block. He did call Quinn's move idiotic for putting him on the block, which I kind of agree with. And then he also said he should have fought harder with Leah to not use the veto. But I mean, like, 
more he should have fought harder with Quentin to not go on the block. Because Leah, if she used a veto, Quentin could have... Quinn could have put up McKinsey. He could have put up anyone. Like, he didn't have to put up his allies. So that was weird. All in all, his interview was good, but then he said something a little bit cocky. He had said, like, on a regular season, I would have made Jerry. That's another thing. Kimo mentioned Jerry in his speech. And I kind of, I don't like that they always mention Jerry because, I mean, I guess, I mean, yeah, it's a thing. But, like, your, your goal should be to win, not just, I made Jerry, you know? But that's just a personal thing with me. He said on a regular season he would have made Jerry. I don't. What is a, this is a regular season. <laughs> like, do you mean like how they used to have nine person juries? If that's what you mean, then sure. But this very much is a regular season of Big Brother, J Joseph. So then Julie said that Ainsley has an announcement and I said, okay, jury and AI arena is over. And that's exactly what she announced. Everybody was super happy. People were crying. Everyone was happy about uh, AI arena being over too. It seemed like, except Quinn, like everyone was hugging and embracing and Quinn just looked like a lost puppy. He was so angry. <laughs> he was like crying. I feel bad kind of, but it's like, he is a horrible player. I have to be honest. I don't know. I like him as a person, but uh, but that's it for this video, or at least this episode. Now I want to get into some spoilers, so stop watching now if you don't want to know any spoilers. All right, you had enough time to click off. So the new HOH is Chelsea. I personally would have liked for like Leah to win. I, I think Leah would have been a good choice. Maybe even Angela, but we have Chelsea as HOH. And I didn't think I would like her as HOH because I thought she was going to get rid of one of my favorites or one of the people, someone I like. But actually, she's targeting Angela? What? Like, I'm like, what? I was fully expecting her to put up the boys. Just probably not Cam, so Quinn and Chemo. Because that's like, the girl, all this stuff that she's been doing with T-Core and all that, but... She's about to put up Kimo again. Like, is T-Core... How is T-Core going to feel about this? Because now T-Core and Kimo are super happy that he stayed. And he's like, Ch Chelsea had our back. No, look at how hard y'all had to fight for her to have y'all back. So now they want to align with everybody that kept Kimo. And I'm just like, this is a mistake. Chelsea's going to win this game. Give her the money. Because she pulled off what I said in the beginning. Like, she... She got it, then she won HOH. She's just, and I'm just looking at this house, and I know Joseph would've went after Chelsea. Who's gonna go after Chelsea? Who? I don't see anyone in this house going after Chelsea. Like, it seems like none of the girls are gonna go after the girls, except Ch Angela. Like, the girls will go after Angela, but they're not gonna go after each other. And then it's like, Kimo's not gonna go after Chelsea because he loves T-Core, and T-Core loves Chelsea. And then it's like, Quinn, maybe, maybe him, after, since he's seen what just happened? And Cam definitely not, so it's, it's weird, but I hope Angela does go, personally. I hope she wants to put up Chemo and Angela, and I hope that it sticks and Angela does go. Uh, but that's it for this video, guys. Uh, be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, share, and all forms of social media. And I will catch y'all later.